evening everyone happy monday i hope you guys had a great start to your week thus far and i hope you had a good trading day today this is the daily update video for monday january 22nd if you missed the live stream that is associated with this video i'll link that up in the i cards as you can see towards the bottom of the screen my gross profit today was 250 dollars i had 63 dollars of commissions and when you subtract that <coughs> excuse me from the gross profit, you get a net profit of $186, which is not a bad start to the week. Today was pretty choppy. And even at times where it was trying to trend, it would just hit a support or resistance level. And it just was bouncing between levels all day today. So the fact that I was able to still stay green, I'm actually really excited about that. As you guys know, a couple of weeks ago, it was what I called the great reset where I lost four out of my five evals. And that was the first week, I believe, after I started trading more volume based with my strategy. So I kind of expected the first week to not go very well. I just didn't expect to lose four out of five of my accounts. But today, one of the 25K accounts came back after it renewed on the 9th. So what I'm really, really focused on at this point is just passing my first account, which can hopefully happen this week, fingers crossed. So let's go ahead and get into the charts so I can show you how everything went today. And I just scroll back away too far. All right. So first of all, I kind of knew today was going to be a little choppy and that I wouldn't have very many trades today, mainly because I did not take my first trade until 844, which I forgot to tell you, I did take eight trades today. Three of them won, two of them lost, and there were three break evens. I'm going to show you guys on the chart which trades were actually invalid, which trades did I miss, and things like that. But like I was saying, I did not take my first trade to 844. Anytime I don't have my first setup really in that first five minutes of the market opening, I can almost guarantee that I am not going to have very many trades. So if I take away the trades that were invalid and add in the one trade that I missed, I still would have only had six trades today. And that is not a lot considering I'm scalping the NASDAQ and I'm scalping for six points at a time. Typically for me, like if volatility is there as well as it not being very choppy, I can typically get anywhere from about, I would say 12 to 18 trades on average. So definitely did not have a lot today. All right, so let's get into these trades. So my very first trade, I did not mean to do that. I am pushing the wrong stuff. My very first trade today was a break even. I actually manually broke even on this one because I was selling going back towards this VWAP level. As soon as I got into the sell, there was a lot of indecision as far as whether the buyers were going to take back over or if the sellers were going to continue. So I went ahead and I broke even there. Really glad that I did because as you guys can see, it bounced back off the, of the VWAP, came up, came back down to the VWAP, and then we changed to an uptrend. So that was really good that I got out of that one because it definitely would not have even gotten to the level of me being able to break even down here. So the next trade, as you can see, I have invalid there. And the reason why this one was invalid is because my minor level was literally right here. So anytime it hits my minor, major, or mid level, like to the tick and then reverses, I do not get into trades like that because it's what I call like a pin bar. And most of the time it's not going to continue in that direction. One of the things that I um, also do not do, even though it might be a really good setup, is I don't take trades going back towards the pin bar. So like this one went back towards there. A lot of times those trades will lose. Um, so I don't take the reversals there. All right, so coming across, uh, I didn't have another setup until 20 minutes later. And I manually broke even here because I realized as soon as I got in that I was not actually supposed to be in. And the reason why, and actually the levels aren't on this chart, but the overnight high was somewhere up in here, like somewhere up in here. So, you know, I'm taking a buy. I did not want to take a buy going back towards the overnight high, right? So I manually broke even there. And as you can see, it immediately reversed thereafter. 
So the next tray here was a win. This was just some simple divergence going back up. Next tray wasn't until another 25 minutes later. And my overall, let me see, was it? No, this was just counter trend divergence. I have not had a lot of counter trend trades uh, lately, but this was one of them and it ended up losing. And this level here isn't, it's irrelevant at this point. I'll show you why it's relevant later, but um, it was not a resistance level at this point in this particular trade. So then right after getting stopped out of this trade, I got into a sale and I was not paying attention to um, the VWAP here. I don't really know why, but I wasn't paying attention to it. And so this actually, even though it won, it was an invalid trade because the volume wasn't really high enough to support it looking this way. So I just kind of got lucky on that particular one. And then coming across, I didn't have another trade until an hour later. However, there was one trade 30 minutes later that I just didn't take. I didn't necessarily miss the trade. I just didn't take it. And it was just because of the way that the price closed. Um, it wicked on my middle level and then like closed on the body of my minor level. And so I've been really like iffy about those particular trades. Like when the trade closes over two of my three levels that I have on my chart. But when I started going through my back test data, when it's divergence like this, I'm okay to trade it. It's just the other setups that I have, I have to be really careful with. So even though I got into the trade back here, that one that was invalid, even if I take that one away and I actually, you know, count this particular trade, you know, that one just takes over that one if I take that one out of, you know, the overall count since it was an invalid trade. All right. And then the only other trade that I had was at 1040. So this was 10 minutes after the last trade I actually took. And so this particular trade lost. And you can see here, I think it came, let's see. It was one tick below where my actual entry would have been. And let me try that a little bit different like that. All right, so you can see it didn't come up to the point where I think it was like four ticks away from hitting the level that I needed it to hit in order for um, my stop loss to move to break even. After I got into this trade, I kept saying like, man, I feel like I should break even. And the reason why is this particular line here, this is when my overall downtrend, I was in an overall downtrend since like nine something in the morning, it changed to an uptrend, right? And so because we were kind of bouncing around this level here, when I got into the buy, as soon as the indecision came in here, I should have went ahead and broken even. Now, if we would have broke above it, came back and retested it, I could have stayed in even if there was some kind of indecision, but it literally closed over it and closed over it again. So that's what I call like a rotation. So when it rotates like that, anytime indecision comes in, because that is a major level, the the overall bias changed from a, a downtrend to an uptrend, I should have broken even. So that's why I typed there should now break even because from now on, I will break even on that particular trade. And then we have, oh, I forgot that wasn't the last trade. This is the last trade. So then we just had um, simple sell continuation here. Took profit right at the VWAP, wicked off the VWAP, two candles in a row, came down, and then we went up. And then we just started kind of, you know, leveling out a little bit. So like I said, overall, not a bad day. If I take away the trades that were invalid and add in the one trade that was valid that I just stayed out of because I was questioning it, I would have had three wins, one loss, and two break-evens instead of three wins, two losses, and three break-evens. So really, I just would have added, you know, a little bit of extra money in there from the one loss that's being counted right now. So not a bad day overall. So let's go ahead and switch gears a little bit so I can show you guys what the accounts are looking like. So like I said, the very first account is the 25K account that renewed on the 9th. So... Basically, the way that I do things, 
the week that it renewed, so it renewed on a Tuesday. I do not trade it that week. I actually wait a full week after. So the full week of waiting was from the 15th to the 19th. And then I add it back. The reason why I do that is because then I have three weeks to either pass or fail it essentially. And I feel like if I can't pass an account in a three week time span, then my strategy is not where it needs to be. So that's why it's been added back now. And as you guys can see, I'm just missing a little bit from the full $1,500 in drawdown. We're missing about $66 or so, not too bad. Um, and then on the 50K account, I'm almost, you know, pushing back towards the $2,000 mark. And I want to get back to the full $2,500 in drawdown. But not a bad day at all. What I'm hoping is that I can continue being positive every single day this week, even if I make mistakes. Um, the one thing that I do have to remind myself is because of all the tweaks and uh, modifications that I've made to my strategy really over the last year. But, you know, I'm making different tweaks, you know, on a week by week and sometimes, you know, every couple of day basis. I don't plan to be 100 percent accurate every single day with my trading and making sure that I'm, you know, in trades I'm supposed to be in and not in trades that I'm not supposed to be in. I don't expect to be there until like everything kind of levels off with me not needing to make any adjustments anymore. So yeah, so overall, not too bad. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you guys bright and early tomorrow morning. Bye.